got this is something I'm very interested about. Uh, if you have a hard copy Bible, raise it up. I'm just trying to see who has hard copy Bibles. Okay, all right. Some of y'all have hard copy Bibles, and who has Bible on their phone? Who has Bible on their phone? Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. So, so here's what we're gonna do. Raise up what, what you got. Raise up what you got. <laughs> Say this Bible. This Bible is the Word of God. It is my instruction book for righteous living. I'm about to hear from the Spirit of God who declares the Word of God. And I'm going to receive it. I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to walk in it to the glory of God. Now let's give God a shout. Come on. And hand clap. Hallelujah. Glory. What a blessing. What a blessing. All right. Well, in the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. I told you it's going to be a lot of, lot, of, lot of scriptures, so write them down. But then again, you also have your hand out. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 54, Psalm 55, excuse me, verse 4. Psalm 55, verse 4. And it reads as follows. Psalm 55, verse 4 and 5 and 6. Let's read together. My heart. Mm, there's that heart again. Say it with me again. My heart is severely pained within me. And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. Anybody ever felt overwhelmed? Tell the truth or shame the devil. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm telling you, that's why the Lord had me to get there. So I said, let's read. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Anybody feel like, what did the, the commercial say? Want to get away? Anybody ever feel like you want to fly away? Mm -hmm. Church, I want to teach today from the title and the question. It's a question. And the question is, what can you do? It's actually a question and a statement. The question is, what can you do? The statement is, what can you do? You ever felt like that? All this stuff going on around me, what can you do? It's like you're just so frustrated, feel so overwhelmed by all this stuff going on, in the world, uh, Minister Darrell didn't know what I was going to preach, but he was praying this morning. He, boy, he should have prayed good. Give God some praise. He prayed so good this morning, didn't he? That it just makes you say, what can you do? What can anybody do with all this stuff going on around here? Well, I'm so glad you asked it because today you're going to get the answer. You're going to get the answer of what you can do. Church, hallelujah. I got uh, three questions that I'm going to ask today. Uh, question number one is, what can you do in light of this imperfect world? What can you do in light of this imperfect world? Question number two is, what can you do in light of imperfect people? And then question number three is, what can you do in light of imperfect understanding? We're going to talk about an imperfect world, imperfect people, and imperfect understanding. Somebody say, what can you do? What can you do? Woo! Well, first of all, when you're dealing with an imperfect world, which is where we are, right? We're in an imperfect world and an imperfect time. But I need you to understand something. Actually, what you need to understand is, as bad as things are right now, uh, it's really not different from how the world has always been. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So really, we, you know, I think we get overwhelmed because the news about how imperfect the world is is just so much more uh, accessible and available to us. It's, it's in your face every day. But it's always been that way. It's always been bad. In fact, I got news for you. Uh, here we are in this Christmas season, Christmas time, and I'm going to be referring a lot to... Uh, Mary and Joseph and the Christmas season in this passage. And in that time, 
For them, the believers, the world was imperfect. It was, it was worse then than it is for us now. I mean, as bad as you think America is, and it's got a lot of problems, one thing that we have never experienced in America, we have never been in occupied territory. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. Please, Jesus, don't. Do you realize what I just said? I'm trying to explain to you that when you look at what we call the Christmas story, it was a story about a people, the Jews, who were settled in their land, Israel, but their land at that time was a conquered land, conquered by the Romans. In fact, there's a scripture, not, not in my list of scriptures, but, but it's there. It's in Galatians 4, 4. It says, in the fullness of time, God brought forth his son made of a woman and made under the law. That's, that's a deep, deep, deep statement. You know why? In the fullness of time, what, what is he talking about? He talked about at the perfect time. The time when, watch this, the time when uh, Rome was the, the, the empire all over the world because they were known for building roads so they could connect everything. It was the perfect time because, because Greece was coming in after Rome and, and the language that was prominent at that time was Greek. That's why the New Testament is written in Greek and not Hebrew. All the prophets, Jews, Hebrew. All the apostles, Jews, Hebrew. But the prevailing language at the time of Jesus, they spoke Aramaic, but Greece, Greek was the prevailing language, and that's why the New Testament is in Greek. So my point is, the Romans were in charge, the Greeks were giving wisdom and letters, and then on top of all of that, there had been 300 years since God had spoken to his people. Never, it had never happened. And the people knew something was getting ready to happen. Just like if you have eyes to see, you know something's getting ready to happen. Yeah. You see this stuff going on over in, 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 in Gaza, and you see this stuff going on in, over in Israel, and, and something's getting ready to happen. Come on, man, somebody say something. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it was a perfect time. So here we go. It was, a, it was a perfect time for Jesus to come. But it was a very imperfect world. So what can you do in light of this imperfect world? The answer is, you better know God. In, in an imperfect world with imperfect problems, you better know God. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about these people being captive in their own country. We, we sit up here marching. And, well, yeah, I mean, for good reason. We're mad that people are being uh, killed in the street unlawfully, etc. But at least, at least we're not occupied by Russia or China yet. Amen. But they were. They were. And all they could think about was a savior, but not a savior for their sins, but a savior from Rome. See, that's why they missed Jesus. To this day, that's why the Jews don't know that Jesus is their Messiah because they keep, in fact, it hit me the other day. It hit me so big the other day. I said, man, how did I, how did I miss this? Uh, if you were to go into my shirt right now, you would see a necklace. And the necklace would be a what? A cross. What, is, what necklace does every Jew wear? Star of David. Why a star of David? Because King David was the kingdom where they were in power. And the first thing they said when Jesus uh, rose from the dead, is this the time when you restore the kingdom to Israel? They want, they want their kingdom to come back. And, and it's not just their kingdom that's coming, it's the kingdom of God that's coming. Give God some praise. It ain't just the kingdom of the Jews, it's the kingdom of God. So listen, in an imperfect world, you, you better know God. Amen. Did you notice I didn't say just believe God? Yeah. See, you believe God to come into a relationship with God. But after you enter into the relationship, you better know God. When I met my wife, when I met my wife, uh, she was 20 and I was 24. And some of you know the story. She knew who I was, but I didn't know who she was because she, you know, had seen me seven years before 
She'd seen my picture in the yearbook, so she knew who I was, and I didn't know who she was. So then that night we talked on the phone, and it was the beginning of me coming into a relationship with her. But I didn't really know her. But after 40 years, oh, after 40 years, hey, I can finish her sentences. I can tell you what she's thinking. I can tell you when she goes, hey, honey, honey, it's too long. Come on, time, time, time. And she can do likewise to me. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, no God. no, God. I'm not talking about just believing God. But you, hey, you passed belief a long time ago. You, you, belief got you in. You better, you better have something better than belief at this point. Come on, church. When you're going through hell, you better be, well, I, I just, I'm, I'm believing God is real. Believing, you better know he's real. Does he talk to you? Did he get you out the last time? You better know that's called experiential knowledge. I said, did he get you out the last time? And how about the time after that? And how about the time after that? You better know something. Come on, church. Jeremiah 29 and 13. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 13, it says, Seek me while I may be found. In other words, you got to, once you come into a relationship with God, it's a, it's a constant uh, learning process. And you have to learn about him through the what? Through the scriptures. Now, here are three things I want you to, to be seeking so that you'll be knowing you got to know these things. Because if you don't know these things in an imperfect world, you're going to feel overwhelmed. First thing you got to know is you got to know that God is perfect, infinite in wisdom and power. That is Psalm 147 and 5. Somebody say, God, God. is perfect. I, I have, uh, I've come into a, a, a beautiful knowledge with God. And that is when I pray, the first thing I do, when I say, when I wake up and I start uh, the Lord's Prayer, and I say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right there is when I reaffirm every morning that God, Adonai, sovereign Lord, is perfect. It is the most blessed thing that has happened in my life because all this stuff is happening all around me. And if you think you got some stuff happening in your life, Come trade places with me. <laughs> I'm just telling you, because a pastor deals with his life, his family's life, but he deals with everybody else in the congregation's life too. And, 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 and the hits keep coming. Did you hear me? I mean, it don't stop. It don't stop. And, and, and you know, so-and-so just died. I mean, so, you just don't realize, a lot of times when we go on vacation, the first thing we pray is, my Father, while we're on vacation, please take care of the flock. Don't let anybody die. <laughs> I mean, you know why we're gone? Because it's just, things are just, you know. But what I'm trying to tell you is you better know that God is sovereign. He's perfect and infinite in wisdom and power. And here's the, here's the key. You have to know it because you don't always see it. You have to know it because the things that you're seeing in the world, the things you're feeling, it's all it's all counterintuitive. It's all contrary to that. You look at it and say, you like you like the, the, the unbeliever. Where's God at? Where's God at? And all this stuff happening. Where is God at? You gotta know that God is in control. You gotta know that God, what the young folks say, the little baby say, he got the whole world in his hand. He got the whole come on world. In his hand, he got the whole world. In his hand, he got the whole world in his hand. Listen, listen, let me tell you, you better know he does. Because if you don't know that he does, then that's a door that the devil can use to come in and bring all kind of doubt, fear, and anxiety, and defeat. I don't care what it looks like. That's why I got that victory confession from. I don't care what it looks like. Come on. Seems like. Seems like sounds like. Or feels like. I know. Come on, say. I know. Let it get I know. In Christ, I win. Give the Lord a hand of praise. You better know it. Listen. Even to the running, you got to run, baby. Go on and do it. Hey, don't, don't stop the five counts. Let me tell you something. Even in death, you get the victory. Paul said to live is Christ and to die is, is gain. 
and, and guess what? And then he, he also told you that you're not going anywhere until it's your time. Yeah. There is a, he said it is appointed on. unto man to die. In other words, that, that's, hey, listen, that's an appointment that you won't be late for. Amen. I know a lot of y'all be late for a lot of appointments, but you ain't going to be late for that. But here's the other side of that. You won't be early for it either. Oh, you won't be early for it either. Because if the Lord said it ain't your time, you ain't going nowhere. Come on, Monica, tell you. Let him, come on, the preach this thing to them. Let it up. She, she quoted twice. Is that right? She quoted twice, and she's in church today. Give God some praise right now. You better know that God is perfect. You better, what the man said, I know that the Lord is omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's all seeing. He's all knowing, and he's everywhere at the same time. See, you, 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 you better know that even though you can't understand it fully. How can God be everywhere? And say, how can he know every star by name and yet know all the intricacies of my situation in my life? Somebody say, he's God. So you better know it. And that leads to the second thing. You better know that God is sovereign. He's, he has always been and still is in control of the world. That's what I was talking about right there. He has always been and still is in control of the world. That's Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. What is that talking about? It's talking about something called predeterminism. In other words, God didn't ask anybody uh, for him to be God. He, we're so used to democracies and people's votes and people's opinions, especially with social media. Everybody got an opinion. God don't care nothing about your opinion. He, he really doesn't. He's going. Everything is going to happen exactly like he said it's going to happen. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, it's going to happen exactly like he. And oh, by the way, if you read the Bible, he said there would be wars and rumors of wars. He said there would be earthquakes. He said there would be pestilences. And all of a sudden, everybody started freaking out because we had a pestilence. Because we had a pandemic. Oh, my God. Oh, it's been a pandemic in 100 years. Well, guess what? He said they would be, and, and they're starting to come more frequently. You know why? Because he said, listen to me very carefully, Matthew chapter 24. He said that these signs, famine, pestilences, wars, rumors of wars, false prophets, they would be the beginning of sorrows. Let me translate that for you. They would be the beginning of the labor pains. Now, I'm not a woman, and I've never given birth to a, a child. But all the mothers help me out uh, and tell me if I'm wrong. Do the labor pains come uh, more frequently? Do the contractions come more frequently the closer you get to the delivery? Yes. And I just yes. help me out, mothers. Yes. Help me out, ladies. Yes. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that's what it is. God is saying there have always been some earthquakes. There have always been some wars. But as it gets time for the delivery, as it gets time for Jesus to rapture the church, as it gets time for the great tribulation, you're going to see these things speeding up because it's getting closer to the time. Give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about. That's what he said. That's what he said. And then you better, oh, I like this one, you better know that you can trust God at all times. You better know that you can trust God. At all. My, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame of holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sick as hell. I'm not, listen, I may vote for somebody, but, that, but, but, but my life doesn't uh, 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 rest on whether or not they win. My life is not resting on whether or not this person, this man wins or that man wins. My life doesn't rest on who's controlling the house or the sin. Come on, somebody. My, my hope is based on Jesus Christ. And he said, trust me. Look what he says in Psalm 62, verse 8. In Psalm 62, verse 8, it says to trust the Lord at all times. Did it say all times? It said trust him at all times. Do I have that scripture up there, Joseph? Trust him at all times, you people. It says pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Selah. In other words, in other words, when you... Trust in God at all times. Watch this. You can rest in his perfectness. Yes. That's the only rest you're really going to have. You, once you understand that God really is in control of all this stuff, yeah. you can rest in his perfectness. Yeah. If not, you, you, you're gonna, your mind is going to be like the, the waves of the sea. 
tossed to and fro. Every, you know, oh, Lord, what's going to happen tomorrow? Oh, Lord, oh, my children. Oh, Lord, my grandchildren. Oh, listen, he, he, God doesn't have no grandchildren. Everybody has got a direct relationship with all of us, and he has got you, and you got to trust him. I don't care if the interest rates go up or down. I don't care if the market goes up or down. I don't care if who's in power. I don't care what Russia's doing, China's doing. And my Bible says God knew all of them. He knows every country. He knows everything. He knows Hamas. He knows uh, 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 ISIS. He knows all of them. And he got everybody in his hand. Give the Lord a hand praise if you don't mind. Amen. 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 What can you do in life in light of an imperfect world? You can know God. And the only way you're going to know God, you're going to get to know him through some experiences, but you also got to get to know him through the word. You got to spend time in that word. He'll explain to you. He'll show you that the whole, really, if you think about it, the whole Bible is uh, a, a whole lot of experiences of people that uh, uh, had a relationship with God and they went through a lot of things like we went through things and you can learn from them what they did right and what they did wrong. And when they trusted God, they came out all right. Amen. Number two, what can you do in light of imperfect people? Somebody say, lock the doors, ushers. What can you do in light of imperfect people? Boy, this, this is like a sequel to my message last Sunday. Because remember I said that God wants his people in church. See, the devil doesn't want you in church. God wants you in church. Where's chapter verse on that passage? That's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, 26. It says, don't forsake the what? The assembly of ourselves together. That's why I was telling, uh, I was saying what I was saying earlier. Yes, if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask, fine, wear a mask. If you've been vaccinated, you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. But either way, come to church. Amen. Come to church. Amen. You, better, you, you better at church uh, with all this stuff going on than, than staying at home, you know, thinking that, oh, I'm going to be all right. No, 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 no. You, there, there's a scripture. Uh, I believe it's Psalm 77. It says that holiness is in the sanctuary of God. And, and if you study it out, it's, it's, a, it's a deep scripture because what it really is saying is that you, you won't, we know that the sanctuary is holy and set apart. But what it's saying is that there's some things that you're not going to get uh, to help you in holiness unless you really come to church. Unless you really come to church, you're going to miss it. Holiness is in the sanctuary of God. So I don't care what's going on, I'm going to be here. Amen? So here we go. Here we go. What can you do in light of the imperfect people? Here's the answer. Become like God. What can you do in light of an imperfect world? You've got to get to know God. But what can you do in light of imperfect people? Somebody said, ooh, uh, hey, fight them, cuss them, all that stuff. No, 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 no. You need to become like God. Here's the point. Focus on perfecting yourself in holiness and love. In other words, if you didn't get the memo, the text, the tweet, the uh, whatever you want to call it, the message, uh, I'll give it to you today. Breaking news. You can't change people. I'm sorry if I upset somebody with that breaking news, but, you know, after being married for 42 years, I, I've come to the knowledge that, and it works both ways, you can't change people. All the married folks, they're doing like this. They just sit there like, oh, what do you do? Pray the Lord. God is good. See, some people, some people really know. The married folk really know. I ain't calling nobody's names out there, but I see y'all married folk out there. And there's other people that know too. Parents know. Siblings know. Family members know. You, has anybody come to that recognition of what I'm talking about? You can't change people. But guess what? Guess what? Do you, boo. You can change you. Boo. Boo. With a boo you, you You can change you. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Now, I, since, since I'm such a nice pastor, I'm going to put myself on the chopping block. And I'm going to tell you right now that, that being a pastor and being the kind of pastor I am, it is only natural for me to want to help people. That's really what, that's the whole thing. I really want to help y'all. I really do. 
but there's a fine line between uh, helping you and, and making you change. I can't make you change. And that's such a liberating thing that I've come into, this wisdom, that I can't make you change. But then I'm sitting there going, well, what am I going to do? God said, change yourself. I told you you're going to leave it better than you came in Jesus' name. Because I, 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 pre I know somebody in here has been frustrated that somebody's not changing. I said, I know there's somebody in here that's been frustrated that somebody's not changing. Well, you just got the answer today. That's not your job. Don't try to change them. Start working on yourself. Give the Lord some praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. We talked about being in an imperfect world and we talked about knowing God. Guess what? I told you that back 22,000 years ago, Joseph and Mary were in an imperfect world. They were basically, you know, captives in their own country. But guess what? They were selected to be the caretakers of God's son. But it wasn't a random selection. They weren't selected for nothing. They were selected because the Bible, read it, read it in the scripture. They were of the line of, of, of Abraham and King David, but even more than that, there were some other people of that line. They were devout. They knew God. They were God-fearing people. Did you hear me? They were God-fearing people. And God said, oh, despite the Romans and all this other stuff, these people fear God. So guess what? Like I said, you gotta you gotta know God, you gotta fear God. But watch this. You have to you have to not focus on changing people. You just focus on changing yourself. Amen. You said, what you talking about, Pastor? Well, let me tell you, let me, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, God told Mary that she was going to birth the Son of God. Am I right? Yes. Send an angel, right? Angel means what? Messenger. So he said, This messenger tells you you're gonna birth the Son of God. And, and then uh, he tells her to go and check out her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is now giving birth at her old age. And she comes back now to Joseph after being gone uh, for at least three months. Three, it was actually three months. Because when she went to see Elizabeth, Elizabeth was six months pregnant. She stayed for three months. And then, and then right before uh, John the Baptist was born, Mary came back to Nazareth. So it's three months. So I say three months. Say three months. three months. What's happening? She's showing, right? She's showing, right? And immediately, all the stuff starts. All the stuff starts. The people, the gossipers, the condemners, the fault finders, everybody. And, uh, of course, it's only natural to think what they thought because, the truth be told, there had never been uh, a birth without the help of a man's seed. It had never happened before, and I got news for you, it ain't never gonna happen again. Give, give Jesus some praise. It, it never happened. He's the one and only begotten of the Father. It had never happened before, and it will never happen again. So it was natural for them to be like, mm, she, 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 she stepped out on him. But here's the point I'm trying to make for, to you. Don't try to change people. She could have been up in the face. Don't you talk about me. I heard what you've been telling, saying about me. You go to the office talking about, I heard what y'all been saying about me. Go to your family. I heard what you've been saying about me. She didn't do that, did she? She didn't focus on them. She focused on herself. Oh, let me go a little step further. Joseph, he looked, and he was a good guy. Remember, he was devout. He feared the Lord. He didn't want to put her away. But the truth of the matter was, he said, I, you know, I don't want you to be stoned. But I don't want you to be my wife either. Because as far as I can see, you, you, you did cheat on me. Does the scripture say that Mary went off on him? Does the scripture even say she even said anything to him? I can't see anything. She just, she didn't do anything. You know what she did? She held her peace. Come on, somebody. And let God fight her back. Oh, I ought, to get, I ought to get an amen on that. I ought to get some hand clap on that one right there. I ain't there. It is right there. Somebody in here needs to hold their peace and let God 
by them. Well, no, I got to change. I got to make them see my point. See, this is what I'm thinking. But I say that, 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 that. No. You just need to just zip it up, hold your peace, and let God fight your battle. You know, that's a powerful thing to be able to be quiet. You know, in married couples, we, we do this a lot. You know, after you're married to somebody a long time, uh, you, you know, you have these little uh, trivial discussions. <laughs> No, no, no. When, 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 when Joe brought that over, it was on a Tuesday. No, honey, I told you it was on a Wednesday. No, I, baby, I'm telling you, it was on a Tuesday. No, it was on a Wednesday. Who cares? But I mean, you know, we get, we get dug in. We get dug in about the smallest stuff, the littlest stuff. But all we got to do is just shut up. And then, in time, God will reveal it was a Tuesday. Right, or a Wednesday. And, and then when you're found out to be right, what do you do? Don't glow. Right. Don't glow. Yeah. Don't glow. Right. Don't glow. Just yeah. praise the Lord. Uh, what am I telling you? I'm telling you that Mary told Joseph that it is God's son. And that she didn't cheat on him. And Joseph was like, the devil's a lie, girl. You think I was born that night? Last night, I was born that night, but not last night. He's like, no. But he went to sleep. And here comes the Lord. With the angel. The same angel, Gabriel. And told him, Joseph, what she said is true. That's God's son. And God wants you to take care of him. See, that's true faith. Hold your peace. Let God Take care of your business. Give the Lord some praise. Let God, let, let God change them. Joseph came out of that situation, did he not? He came out of that situation. Baby, what you need? What you need, baby? Oh, God, God spoke to you. God spoke to you. He told me it's going to be. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's roll. So, so listen. You, so, so what can you do in light of imperfect people? Here, here it is. Three things. I said you, be, you can become like God. And here's the three things you can do. Number one, you can become more patient and kind. That's 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Love is patient and is kind. Love is patient and is kind. Mm -hmm. if they, I mean, it has, a, has other uh, descriptions and adjectives underneath that, but those two words right there encapsulate what love is. Now, here's an interesting thing about that. Love is patient and is kind. Notice how kindness and patience relate to people. Did you hear what I just said? Some people think, well, I got a lot of love. Oh, really? Well, let's see it in the context of people. And that's why church is so important. Because guess who you run into at church? People. What kind of people? Imperfect people. Just like you. And, and patience and kind are, are like faith and hope. They're two sides of the same coin. Like one is like offense, the other one's like defense. One's action, the other one's reaction, the other one, or response. The kindness is you taking the initiative to show uh, the good works and the good love of God to people. Boy, kindness is a powerful thing. You just, you know, you just wake up and your spouse is cooking your favorite meal and you didn't ask for it. You come home and your spouse has gotten your favorite thing from the grocery store, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> kindness is the kindness is kindness is like COVID. It's it's contagious. <laughs> no, but in a good way though. In a good way though. It, it's contagious. It, it just it's contagious. When people are kind to you, you want them to be kind back. But somebody got to start this thing going. Somebody got to start the love train, right? You start that love train, man. We're gonna go down the track. So be, pa be, be kind and then be patient. Now, 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 kindness is good, but patience, oh my God. Patience is the one. Now, patience is the real one that's tough. That's when people keep, keep, keep doing the same thing. And you know how we like to say, working your nerves? Oh boy, people need to be working your nerves. <laughs> You're just working my nerves, just working my nerves. Well, guess what? Just be patient with me. Just be patient with me. Just be patient with me, like God is patient with you. Church, 
we got to become more patient kind. Guess what? We got to become more merciful and forgiving. Yes. Now that's John 13, 34. John 13, 34, we have to become more merciful and forgiving. See, see, we somewhere along the line, the church missed uh, the memo. Jesus said in John 13, 34, he said, a new commandment. Say new commandment. Yes. Say again, say new commandment. We're still stuck on love your neighbor as yourself. I'm sorry. I did the research. That's the Old Testament. Do the research. They asked him. When they asked Jesus the question, what was the great commandment in the law? And he said, there are two. Love God with all your heart and soul and mind. He said, the second is as unto the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. But, but, but they were under the Old Testament, and he was quoting the Old Testament. But, but some days later, right before he died, the night before, he died. He said, a new commandment I'm giving to you as I institute the new covenant. Somebody say new. new. One of the best definitions of new is it ain't old. I got a new suit. What? It's not the old one. I got a new attitude. That's Patty LaBelle, chapter one. It ain't the old one. Some of y'all need a new attitude. Anyway, but let's go back to this. So, but what I'm saying is, he, he said, a new commandment I give you. He said, watch this. He did not say, love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm glad he didn't say that, because some of us don't love ourselves. If you love your neighbor the way you love yourself, your neighbor's in trouble. That's why we got all this stuff wrong in the world right now. People killing people because they don't care about their own lives. All these people out here, you talking about mental illness, Brother Darrell. You're absolutely right. There's, there's mental illness and then there's just uh, 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 spiritual illness too. Where people are just not saved. They don't know who they are. They don't know their value. And if they don't know value of their lives, you know they don't care about your life. Why do you think these, most of these people are killing all these people after they kill them? They, 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 it's like uh, suicide by a cop. Right? right? They, they, they already know they ain't going to make it out. They're going into there with the purpose of I'm gonna kill as many people as I can be killed, and I and I'm gonna be killed. They don't, don't care. So he didn't say love your neighbor as yourself. He said love one another as I have loved you. <coughs> last time I looked, he laid down his life for us. In other words, last time I looked. He was merciful and forgiving to us. He was on the cross and he said, Father, what? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. Boy, I can imagine Mary saying that prayer. Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. They are cursing me. The mother of the Son of God. When God said, blessed is this woman above all women. And all women shall call her blessed. Doctor, you, you got to be careful. I read some, some, something in the news just today, this morning when I was reading on the news. said somebody was uh, cursing Israel and then they just dropped dead. you got, you got to be careful who you're cursing. The Bible said don't curse when God is blessed. You know, they didn't find that out. He, said, he told them, he said, I can't curse when God is blessed. Speaking against the pastor. Speaking against the, you know, don't curse when God is blessed. All right, now, so here we go. So he was merciful and forgiving, and that's where we should be. And I got news for you. I'm, I'm saying to myself, yes, 2024, I'm going to be more merciful and forgiving. Amen. I'm going to be less, and then at least my third word, I'm going to be more tolerant and less judgmental. Amen. I'm going to be more tolerant and less judgmental. Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 7, he said, judge ye not. Right, right. But, but you got to understand it. He said that you may be judged. What he was really saying, he, he wasn't saying you can't judge things. Obviously you have to judge. First of all, you have to judge uh, situations. He even said you have to you judge a tree or you know a tree by its fruit. All right? But what he was saying is, don't be so quick to, to find fault in people. Because when you see a twig in their eye, there's a log in yours. Amen. But you said, watch it. Danger. Danger will rise. That's, you you see you see it, you see in some, you see in something in them, but you do the same thing if not worse. And you quick to judge. S somebody say, become more like God. You know the scripture actually talks about that. It says in uh, First Peter, uh, chapter one, verse fifteen. It says, "Be holy as He is holy." 
I believe that was a slide right before that. It says, be holy as he is holy. In other words, we are set apart to be God's children, but, but there's a part of holiness that we get upon salvation, and then there's another part of holiness is, is called a, a progressive or practical holiness that we have to practice. We have to practice holiness. We have to practice lovefulness. Can I get an amen? amen? You have to practice that. And then how do you practice it? God gives you some unloving and unholy people to practice on. Everybody that you ever said that worked on your nerves, God allowed them to be there to work, not, not to work on your nerves, but to work out your soul salvation. He put them there so he, you would work out your holiness and you'd work out your love. He left them there because you didn't get the lesson yet. You still, you still, you still, you just gonna have to learn that, yeah, you know, they, you, know, you used to say they were stuck on stupid and all that stuff, but you just, now God's trying to get you to be more patient. Right. Lastly, what can you do in light of your imperfect understanding? Here we go. What can you do in light of your imperfect understanding? Well, you know you got imperfect understanding because you're not God. Right. We don't even know what's gonna happen, you know, the, to, the rest of the day. Amen. Amen. We really don't. And so we have imperfect understanding. Here's the answer. With your imperfect understanding, what should you do? You should submit to God. You should submit to God. You should submit, first of all, to the word in spite of your feelings. Do you realize that Mary was basically close to nine months pregnant and she had to travel a hundred miles on a donkey? I don't want to travel a hundred yards on a donkey. I really don't. Or a horse even. I, I remember when I was a young kid, they used to have all these little horse places up there, like right around where El Segundo and all that was. They'd have all these places you could ride horses. And I, you know, we'd go out there and we'd ride horses just for like 10, 15 minutes. And by, after that time, I was saddle sore and all that stuff. You know, you be, now I know why those cowboys used to walk like that, you know, like that. They'd walk like this. <laughs> Hurts. You put me figure that's the way everybody traveled back in the day. I'm glad I wasn't born back in the day. But but my point is, my point is that uh, Mary submitted to the word of God, and Joseph did too, and this woman, nine months pregnant, and got to go a hundred miles. She didn't feel like it. Here's the question: how many things are God is God telling you to do that you don't feel like doing? I don't feel like going to church. Wow. I, well, you know, I so and so's in the hospital. Well, I don't feel like visiting them. Plus, that you know, all this disease going around. I don't know why I should be in there. Most of my life, most of my life is doing things I don't feel like doing. Yeah. I'm just talking about in the natural. Yeah. In the natural, you just be surprised the amount of people. I, I had a day yesterday it was like that. I mean, people just calling me from all over. And, and the Lord just told me, he said, now, you've come to a place of, of great wisdom. He said, yeah, people are seeking you out, and they, they're pulling on you. And he said, and a lot of times you're tired and don't feel like it. He said, but by faith in Jesus' name, do your job. Do your job. Amen. Hey, Amen. submit to the word in spite of your feelings. That's Romans 117. Why? Because it says, it says, the just shall live by what? Faith. I don't know where we get off talking about all these feelings. There's nothing in the Bible that says you live by feelings. Nothing. It says the just shall live by faith. In other words, you respond to what God said. It has nothing to do with your feelings. And then, secondly, submit to, not only submit to the word, submit to the spirit in spite of your lack of understanding. That's John 16, 13, which basically says the, the spirit is the spirit of truth. He leads you into all truth. Well, guess what? The more you walk with Christ, the more the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you. Now, when you first started this journey, you weren't used to the voice of the Holy Spirit. But the more you're in Christ, the more the Holy Spirit. In fact, it, 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 what you find out, and that's my last point, you will find out that you what you should be doing is uh, you should be giving him permission every day. Amen. It's, I found out it's a daily thing. Anybody else find that out? It's a daily thing. That's why Jesus hooked us up. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Now watch this. Your kingdom come, your will be done. There goes my feelings. There goes my understanding. And then, and then the third thing is, there goes my will. Feelings, understanding, will. Submit to God's will in spite of your will. Uh-oh. Submit to God's will in spite of your will. You, wait a minute, Pastor. This Christian life, you talk about this kind of tough. Yeah, but the alternative is, is, is terrible. The alternative, if you do it with your pride and your flesh wants to do, that'll end you up in hell forever. And all God says is trust him and submit to his word, his spirit, and his will. His word, his spirit, and his will. And guess what? At the beginning when you do it, it's scary. As my grandma says, it's scary. It's scary. You're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But once you do it, and you, every time you do it, you start going, oh, that worked out good. Ooh, I didn't imagine it would be that good. Ooh, I was supposed to do that. Ooh. And then after a while, you start going, I'm just going to trust him. I'm just going to, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to trust him because it's like, I don't know what I'm doing up in here every day. People ask me, what you going to do tomorrow? Well, whatever the Lord says. Because, I, you know, I make the man's mind plans his way, but God orders his step. And, and, the, and, and you will think you're going to do this, you're going to do that. What did they say in the scripture? They said, I, 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 if the Lord wills. We can say a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. If the Lord wills. You don't know. So church, what are we saying? We're saying that in an imperfect world, you got to do what? You got to know God. You can't just believe. You gotta really know that He's in control of everything. And the more you study, the more you're gonna understand that He's a sovereign God. The more you understand that 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 God set everything before the before He brought the world into existence. Everything. He knew exactly when you were gonna be born, who you were gonna be born to, everything. As much as you might say, you know, and people love that, that phrase, I, I was born into a dysfunctional family. Everybody was. Everybody is just levels of dysfunction. I mean, it, I mean, so, but somebody said, no, no, my family put the funk in dysfunction. But they, I, I don't care. Everybody had an imperfect family. And God knew you were supposed to be in there so that you could help them. He would change you. And if you change, you could be a light in that dark family. Instead of you trying to trying to change, you can't change them. You can't change them, but you can change and be a witness and a light, and you can pray and you can prophesy and believe for God. And at and at the point in time, the same way that God used somebody to help you, He'll use you to help somebody. Amen. In an imperfect world, you got to know God. In an imperfect world, you got to become like God. You got to become like him. You got to become more holy and more loving. It's an ongoing process. You got to be more merciful to people, and you got to realize that the bottom line is I've got to love them with the mercy that God loved me with. And every time you get ready to do something, just remember that God has been merciful to me. I got to be merciful to them. Who am I to not be merciful? Don't be like that man who said, I owe the money. Gee, he said, uh, he said, forgive me the money I owe you. And the man forgave him. And then he went out because he's trying to get his finances together to repay this man. So he went out and found all the people that owed him money. And he said, now you got to give me my money. And he said, I can't afford to give you your money right now. And he said, no. And he started shaking them and beating them and everything else. And God said, you wicked servant, I'm going to throw you in prison forever. He said, how dare you not give them the mercy that your master gave you? How dare you be unmerciful to them when I've been merciful to you? Come on, somebody. And then lastly, imperfect understanding. Let's, let's just be real about it. You really don't understand what God is doing. You don't. We don't understand. We know what he's doing as far as good, but we don't know everything he's doing. And the thing about God is he works in the spirit realm. So you can't see it. But only in time when you, that's, that's where they get that saying, hindsight is 2020. You can look back and go, oh, this is what he was doing. I mean, you still got people tripping over here talking, mad, it mad as hell because and, and people brought us over here and made us slaves and everything else. Guess what? If God allowed it, then it was for a reason. 
I could be in the, I could be up there in Africa somewhere just trying to get some water right now. You know, there's all the stuff that's going on there. But God saw fit to have our ancestors to be the ones who came on over here to this country right here. God had a plan. Amen. And then here I am still mad about it. No, 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 no. There was a plan and there was a purpose. And guess what? And I'm going to embrace it and walk in it. So church, the Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. My time is up and I thank you for yours. Amen. Amen. What can you do? With all this stuff going on, what can you do? You can know God. You can become like God. And you can submit to God. And when you do that, you're going to rest in his perfectness. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, saints are praying. We always want to give people an opportunity to Hallelujah. To receive the gift of God. There's a lot of gifts that are going to be given this holiday season. Hallelujah. That's some nice music. There's a lot of gifts that are going to be given this holiday season. But I'm here to tell you, they'll come and they'll go. But the gift that keeps on giving, the gift of God, is Jesus Christ. There's no, it's not, it's not even a close race. There's nothing else in this category. He is, the Bible says, he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. And when you have Jesus Christ, you move from death to life. From darkness to light. It is, it is the, the only and the biggest game changer that you really have. So, uh, I want to offer you Jesus Christ. I want to give that to somebody today. I want everybody to Please repeat after me the salvation prayer just loud enough so your neighbor and those online can hear. We never know who is listening online. We have people who contact us online from all over the world. So we just never know how much somebody is being reached. Amen. Please repeat after me the salvation prayer. Even if you know the Lord, just uh, again to uh, strengthen your neighbor. Say with me. Say, God, God. forgive me. For my sins, I believe that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to pay for my sins with his shed blood and his broken body. He died for my sins. Then you raised him from the dead to prove he's Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I promise to love you and serve you forever. Because of my faith in Christ, I am now free. I'm now saved. I'm a child of the Most High God. Give the Lord a hand, praise. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. I'm going to ask the church to stand, please.